Okay, so how about a short and sweet video? We'll get right to the point. How do we overcome drag? Actually, calculating out how much energy that we have to put in a system to overcome drag on a simplified level is not really that hard. So if I take a look at it, what does physics tell us that energy production is? Well, energy production, energy is just going to be speed times force. So that means in our case, power is going to be the speed, which is our velocity, times the force. And we're going to need to have a force greater than drag. Drag is going to be the minimum to overcome that. And that's all there is to it. Power required is going to be the velocity times the force of drag. One thing that we can add to that is an eta, and that would be the efficiency of any transmission. And so that's how we'd be able to calculate out how much power we need to overcome the force of drag. And since that was a really, really short topic video, the next one's a really short one. Let's just put them together all in one video, and let's talk about composite body drag. Now, the question is, how do we figure out? We've, we've talked about, okay, we've got this plane. The wings have drag. The body has drag. The tail has drag. How do we do it? We use what's called composite body drag, which is basically superposition for fluids. And you just take... The, you can approximate the drag on a complex body by treating each part as its own simple part and then adding it together. So if I've got a very poorly drawn picture of a plane, I can take, that's going to be equal to whatever the drag on the body is. I'm going to add to that the drag on the tail and then add to that the drag on the wings and that will give me the plane. Or if I have a, this is a sign into the ground and I have the wind blowing at it, that's basically going to be equal to the drag on the sign plus the drag on the pole. And that's all there is to it. It's a pretty simple thing to do. Just break it up into easy individual parts and put it together.